How can a writer develop characters using the three wells of screenwriting? Okay, that's... It's kind of super easy. It's one of the easiest ways to... So I've got a chapter in the book on, on writing characters from using the three wells. And just to give you an idea, um, if you have a character, and they can be a very minor character or, or a major character, but I'll just use a minor character for an, ex for an example because it can show you how kind of powerful the wells can be. Um, if, for example, you've got a character that's walking into a store and they have some dealing with a store clerk. You know, there's a clerk, at the, a clerk at, the, at the store and they're doing something and they have some dialogue between them. Um, so this is a minor character. The store clerk is some minor character who you could just write as store clerk one. But if you want to kind of use the three wells to maybe pump up that character a bit, you can look at your external source as well and make a list of characters from movies that you like. They could be absolutely random characters, but then they should be in a way. Just, I like this character, I like this character, I like, you know, the guy from The Shining, I like, um, I don't know, just anyone I like. Uh, okay, the Michael Corleone from The Godfather, I'm thinking of all the good movies now for some reason. Um, what have I watched recently? I like the Spider-Man's best buddy in Spider-Man, he's funny. And you make a list of all the movies, characters from other movies you've seen, and then you take your store clerk, your store clerk and you say, could he be Spider-Man's buddy from that other movie? He could be Spider-Man's buddy from the other movie. And suddenly your imagination, well, is kind of lighting up because you're making a collision of two things. And suddenly you've got this, oh wait, what happens if he was Spider-Man's buddy from the other movie? And then the clerk suddenly has a character. He's got glasses, he's a bit chubby, and he's like really funny. And maybe he's like, you know, wearing a, I don't know, maybe he's, maybe what you buy from him, he says something about linked up to movies or, or, or um, comic books, and now you've got a character suddenly just from, from doing that. So that's a, it's almost like a, uh, like a Rolodex. You're flipping through all these characters that exist before and putting them in, in kind of minor parts of your movie. You can do it with a major character, but then you need to take elements from different characters and put them together. And so you take you know, the sort of, I don't know, the anger of one character mixed with the daddy issues with another character mixed with uh, something from, and then you can create sort of composite characters using other movies. It can be really fun. Uh, and can be really effective and can spark off your imagination well. This is how you do it. You, you kind of collide ideas together. And in that collision of store clerk and Spider-Man's buddy, your imagination has just suddenly gone off. And he's suddenly a much clearer character. By the way, when you write that into your script, when you read the script, the character leaps off the page because suddenly your minor characters have become really, really interesting. Um, the other really fun thing is to go into your memory well and go, hmm. Clerks that I've experienced in my life. <laughs> okay, that could be one thing you could do. Or you could say, um, I'm by the way, this is what it looks like. Tapping into the memory well always takes a bit longer because you have to kind of look into your own life. And it's like, hmm, it slows down a bit. And you're like, um, okay, so there's this guy, Kevin. Yeah, he's a buddy of mine. He's got his hair shaved on the side. He's got tattoos all over him. And he's kind of like quite a fun guy. He's a bit strange. He's got an interesting way of talking. What happens if he was the clerk? Oh yeah, that could work. Or maybe it won't work at all. Maybe, so some of the characters, but, but what you can access in your memory wall is absolutely unique characters that no one's seen before. And then suddenly they're the store clerk and then suddenly your, your store, store, store clerk leaps off the page. I actually had this experience in a story that I wrote. I think I talk about it in the book where I had a, um, a, a manager in a music store. So one of my characters had a, she made her own um, songs and she was trying to get her songs on. She, she would put them onto like a DVD, a, a disc, like a CD, and try and sell it to the store. But the store clerk, uh, the idea was that she's not going to get that sold because the store clerk, she's like, it's against company, company policy. And the store clerk, I just chose this random guy from my life, totally tattooed everywhere, piercings everywhere, long hair, slightly effeminate. I think he might go by another gender at the moment. It's, I'm not sure, but he or she... Uh, is the store clerk now in the in the movie? And awesome. suddenly the character was really alive and he was interesting. And and my uh, character who was trying to sell her songs had a baby and she was holding the baby. And at some point she passes it to the store clerk manager. And now he's <laughs> holding this baby and he's like, it's against company policy. And it's like, is it, does he mean holding the baby or does he mean the CD? And suddenly there was like a whole interaction. So drawing from the memory well in your minor characters can really pump it up. But also I think um, in the major characters. So when you Creating character is is a real art form, actually, and and you know people spend a lot of time. You're trying to watch your backstory of your character, what's the history of your character, and there's there's some something about being able to empathize with your character. Sometimes you have to draw from your own experiences around something similar to what that character has gone through, and then suddenly it becomes really real for you, and then suddenly it starts resonating for you, and that character matters to you, and then you write from that position. So that's a 
summary of how you can um, beef up characters using the three wells. Yeah. There's like a whole chapter that. on it, so you'd have to, to get into it. might take a while. But yeah, those, those little samples, I mean, I promise you, you just go through your script, take all your minor characters, use the external source well or your memory well, and your script will suddenly have a lot more life. And when people read it, they'll go, oh, wow, that character leaps off the page. What's he done different? Well, not much. He's just attached something to them so, they, yeah, so they're real, I guess. It's about trying to create something that is a real space for the reader. I like that. I like that clerk analogy because mm. you, you can think to ones in movies, but then yeah. you can also think to ones that you experienced that you first maybe didn't think about yeah. or ones that really stood out, whether they were really nice or exactly. one time I had someone accuse me of stealing something oh, no. and he accused me right at the register. What? And I said, oh, you didn't see the receipt for the thing in the bag oh. from the other store that I went to? And then it was like this awkward, you want to talk about awkward <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. I love but, that story. Yeah, and it was great because then That's I so had cool. to keep seeing him, but I knew in the back of my mind, oh, and wow. he knew, oh, and I didn't say anything. I wasn't going to call him out. or. You know. That's amazing. But I, that was such a vivid memory of interacting with a clerk. And yeah. there have been great times when you yeah. joke around, and yeah. they're, they're fun, and... But, but that's true, it seems like such a minor thing, but if you look back... And then if you look back, what you've told me now is a scene that's got subtext, amazing subtext, like going back to the store when you know and he knows, and right. then, there's great subtext there, and that's the stuff that really works in movies. You know, um, so actually a movie that I haven't seen is The Farewell, which is... Um, I was just going to go see that. Okay. Wow, how weird. Yeah, well, okay. that's one movie that I think is going to be really interesting. And I, I heard the podcast that it's based on, because This American Life did a podcast of the... Fa basically, The Farewell was a podcast many years ago. And she went and wrote the movie and now directed it. That movie, I think, is going to have many moments of subtext. Absolute complex subtext because of the structure of the movie, but also because it's based on a memory well. It's all from a memory well. And so that kind of... Everyone's trying to teach how to write subtext. It's very difficult. You almost have to, either the characters must be so alive or you have to draw from life. And then you get that immediately. You talk about story and subtext. It's in your one memory that popped up in your, right. when I mentioned Clerk, you were like, ha ha, yes. I've got that already. And everyone's <laughs> got that and yours is unique. If you wrote that scene, it would be a unique story. Sure, yeah, anyway. sure. That's so funny that you mentioned yeah. the farewell. Mm. Great, excellent.